Welcome, Camille. Thanks. It's a mouthful, I know. Ooh, that is a big step. Let me, oh. I know there's like lights on me. Oh, clicker, that would help. Hi everyone, good morning, how are you? You doing well, are you excited to be here? Yeah, awesome. So how many of you are already traveling nomads and you live out of like a backpack or a suitcase or a car or some sort of vehicle? Okay, awesome. And so how many of you have like that one good outfit that you know you can wear to like the club, dinner, or say a presentation at Nomad Summit? Welcome to my best outfit. All right, guys, so I'm Camille Littell, and my talk is Goodbye Cubicle, Hello Open Road, The Mental, Emotional, and Financial Journey of Reinventing Yourself. And I know it's a mouthful, but the reason I titled it that way is because when you step into the world of nomadism and add on entrepreneurialism, it is literally a process of reinvention. And I'm gonna walk you through that through the lens of my own journey. And my hope is just that by sharing my journey with you, that we have a connection, that there's something here that you can relate to. You may not relate to everything, but I'm hoping that it can help level set the expectations of this lifestyle. And I also share some tips and resources and be sure to come talk to me. I love connecting, I love talking. I'm hosting a workshop tomorrow as well. We can talk about all kinds of things. So with that, let me tell you where we're going. So I'm gonna do a little introduction and background about myself. I'll talk about nomadism then and now, and then reinvention through the lens of the mental, emotional, and financial journey. So a little background on me. These are my folks. It's my dad and my mom. Yes, yeah, some of you are like, I know that era, I get that. Yes, so um, these people over here, these are true artists, these are creatives. They come straight out of the hippie era, hate Ashbury, anti-Vietnam War. These are people who rode motorcycles across the country, um, just wind in their hair, just embracing life. And in fact, my whole family on this side is like that. My aunt is an actress. My stepmom is an amazing singer. So this whole side of my family is just like artists and creatives. And by the way, my dad is an OG hipster. I mean, look at him. Okay, he like invented that term. However, it's these people who really raised me and these are my grandparents. This is World War II. This is patriotism, all American. This is all about security and safety. They used to tell me all the time, go to school, get a job, buy a house, settle down, get secure. Retirement, all of that stuff, investments. So I had these very two uh, really different life philosophies influencing me. And it, it actually caused a lot of confusion I don't know if some of you have grown up in like different households where like one household has a way of thinking and the other one is totally different. And it's, just, it's kind of confusing. Um, so I'll tell you how that influenced me. But first, I want you to know that these are the original hashtag nomads. I mean, these people traveled. They were in the war and went all, all over the world and lived in different countries. And so I do come from really a family of nomads. So it's really in my blood. So what did that do for me? So I have kind of two sides. I think everybody does, if not more. Um, so I have this kind of serious side. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology. I feel like I'm blocking the slides here. Let me stand over here. So I have a master's degree in counseling psychology. I have 20 years in corporate America as a trainer and a coach, as a project manager, which I hear today is called integrator, if you didn't know that. Um, and then I was a CI consultant, continuous improvement, working on processes. In fact, my beloved coworker, Jill Merchant, is here today. She's, she came out to see me. She's amazing. Um, I have worked with corporate leaders and employees at all levels. I also, my, one of my first jobs was helping welfare recipients get off of welfare and back into the workforce. So I have a lot of career development in my background. I've worked with at-risk youth. That comes out of my counseling degree. So I worked with kids who are at risk for truancy, um, gang behavior, anger management, all of that kind of stuff. And then most recently, I work with digital nomads and entrepreneurs. So with digital nomads or people who want to do that, I help them find remote work. I kind of draw on some of my background here with coaching and uh, career development. And then with entrepreneurs, I partner with them to help them develop products and services. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, don't I sound like I have my stuff together? 
right? Aren't you like, damn, she's smart. Okay, good. That's, that's what I want you to believe. Okay. But I also have this wanderlust side that I just mentioned. And, and I'll share this first quote unquote fun fact with you, um, which is that I actually failed kindergarten. <laughs> like probably the only person in the world who failed kindergarten. Okay. Like how does that happen? Um, I just wasn't catching on quickly to things. And, and a lot of that had to do with just sort of the turmoil in my family. A lot going on, household to household. I think some of you can relate to that. And I barely went to college. I eventually did. But it was really hard. School was very difficult for me. I didn't feel smart. I had kind of an I'm dumb complex that I carried around for really like until yesterday when I wrote that other slide. Um, so, you know, that kind of wounding can take a toll on you. And it kind of leaves you wondering, like, what am I supposed to do? And, you know, and it took me a while to find my way. I did. You know, I worked in corporate. I was pretty successful. And so that also created kind of a bit of an antsy feeling, like I would go work in these different environments, I've had a lot of different careers, um, but I always felt like I didn't belong there, like I'm supposed to do something else. I was probably an entrepreneur and didn't know it, um, so if you're sort of feeling that way, like ah, I'm in this, this work thing and I go to work every day and I'm, I'm pretty good at it, but it's like, it's not really inspiring me, I feel like I'm capable of more then I just encourage you to pursue that. And I tell people the story about kindergarten because when people see me speak or they interact with me, they're always like, you're so confident, I could never do what you do. And I tell people, I'm not really that confident, I'm just really courageous. I just do it. I don't think about it, I don't worry about it, I don't analyze it that much because the confidence builds with courage. And so as you enter this nomadic lifestyle, you will probably butt up against confidence issues from time to time and wondering like, am I doing the right thing? Is this the right step? And it's like, don't even listen to that voice. Just keep moving forward. That's my best advice. And I don't give advice very often, to be honest. So a couple other things. I have backpacked through eight European countries. Uh, and also I lived and backpacked through New Zealand and Australia, which I'll talk about in a minute. I have been to Mount Everest base camp with my husband, Bryce, who's in the audience as well. There we are. Well, actually, that's on Kilimanjaro, because we did summit Kilimanjaro. And I've been a few other places, too, but these are kind of the highlights. And then, of course, for two years, the last two years, I have been a full-time RV nomad and entrepreneur. We've been to 30 states, and we've covered 24,000 miles. We are moving fast. <laughs> we need to slow down. And then we launched our website, More Than Wheelin, that offers RV life, travel, and remote work resources. I can talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. So really quickly, and then we'll do a quick activity. I wanna talk about nomadism then and now. So I have been a nomad a couple of times in my life, um, really about 20 years ago, and I, I hesitated telling this audience that I was a nomad 20 years ago. <laughs> like, they're gonna be like, she's old. <laughs> but um, about 20 years ago, I went to New Zealand and Australia, and there was no social media. There was no online work, and let's face it, there was barely an internet, okay? Uh, there was no such thing as digital nomad, as Kristen mentioned. And I lived out of a backpack, a car, and a tent. It was amazing, guys. This is like really one of the best times of my life. And I did more traditional work, um, worked in restaurants. I taught English at a language school, and my favorite job for two whole days was making sheep whistles. I actually made sheep whistles, didn't last. And it was super fun and liberating, and it was simple. It was such a simple way of living, and it was inexpensive. It was really quite amazing. Um, now, let me contrast that with today. Today, you can make money pretty much any way you want. Online opens up so many possibilities. I mean, I know some of you listen to Johnny's podcast and there are a couple other podcasts and resources. I mean, there's just like infinite ways to make money now. And what seems to be popular is monetizing your journey, which is, you know, starting a YouTube channel about your travels or getting a sponsorship, you know, through Instagram or whatever. But I believe that we are influenced by the influencers. And what I mean by that is, you know, you're looking out on all these platforms, you're seeing these beautiful photos of people doing amazing things, and it kind of influences you to think that's what that's what it looks like. That's what nomadism is. And I need to do that. And that looks amazing. And I feel like after a while, it all looks the same. And you sort of lose, well, what, what does it mean for me? Like Kristen talked about earlier, 
This is your journey. You choose. You don't have to have an amazing Instagram story every day to be living an amazing nomadic lifestyle. And in addition to that, you know, nomadism is already challenging. I mean, you saw the chart, kind of the emotional journey. And when you fold in entrepreneurialism on top of that, things get complex very quickly, or can. It's still fun and liberating, but with all those increased possibilities comes increased complexity, and that is what I'm gonna address for the rest of the chat here today. But the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to know, again, you have options. So you can scale this lifestyle however it works for you. And that includes doing things like not being online. I know, that's shocking. But here's, my, here's one other piece of advice. I know, I don't give advice, but here's just one more. Um, if you can afford it, if you can spare being a nomad and going to wherever you want to go, let's, let's pick a country like Fiji, for example. If you want to go to Fiji and surf or teach surfing or just hang out and meet the people and not open a laptop for six months, I encourage you to do it because you will never get that time back. You'll be able to immerse yourself in the culture. You'll be able to slow down and really just enjoy the simplicity of living like that. Because the minute you go online, you're probably not coming offline, to be honest, unless you burn out, which happens. So if you can spare it before you start building a business or doing any online stuff or posting Instagram photos every day or whatever, try to do that, okay? All right, quick activity. So what I'd like you to do is meet your neighbor just for like two minutes. We'll make this very quick. I want you to share your biggest excitement about being a nomad. And if there's time, your biggest challenge or like pick one. Pick your biggest excitement or your biggest challenge about being a nomad. We're going to make this real fast. Let's go. <laughs> Can you get one of me, like here? Thank you. Oh. Wasn't sure if you were getting me or somebody else. All right, let's try to wind it down. <laughs> I cannot take a photo. Every time it's someone takes a photo, I'm like, ah. <laughs> All right, guys, let's wrap that up. Let's wrap it up. Did you learn something about your, your neighbor? You learned some things? See, I think it's important to share not only the exciting parts of this lifestyle, but the challenges too, because that's real. And I like to keep it real. So for the next bit here, I'm gonna talk about the reinvention process through mental, emotional, and financial journey, starting with mental. All right, so the mental journey. This isn't what I expected. I hear this all the time, I'm in so many Facebook groups, and I keep seeing this theme where people are like, this is hard, this nomad life. Now, keep in mind I'm an RVer, and when you, when you have something like a vehicle that you're dependent on, that does create a little bit more complexity than say, just traveling out of a backpack, right? Living hostel to hostel, or you know, co-living spaces, or whatever. This is harder, you have technical and mechanical challenges, and you're always moving, and you know, so there is that aspect to it. But, you know, when, when Bryce and I first started, we had painted this vision in our minds of like this amazing RV lifestyle. We were looking at all the forums. We did exactly what Kristen said not to do, which is like watch all the YouTube videos and, you know, get all this information, which is great, but it paints a picture of like, we're gonna go coast to coast and live on beaches and like every day is gonna be amazing and rainbows and all this stuff. And then within like the first three weeks, our slide broke our bedroom slide and it like wouldn't go in or out. It was like crashing into the walls. We had to live outside of a dealership's um, bay 
while they ordered some parts. It was raining. It was in Oregon. It was just like, Ooh. you know, it's not what I expected. However, because I'm an antsy person and I couldn't do anything for four days, I got on Craigslist. I started looking for jobs. And in fact, I found a job. I found four jobs, to be honest, but I picked the one that I thought was most interesting, and that was an acting gig. Poor Bryce. I mean, he's like, an acting gig? Really? <laughs> and so I tell people, I'm not an actress, but I play one in my RV, so I can probably do it. And we did it, and we made, you know, not that much money, but it really opened my mind to what was possible, even on Craigslist. Even if you're willing to stick around in a place for a little while, and pick up some side work. And so Johnny mentioned about you can live in this country for pretty inexpensively and even in a nice RV, we have a pretty nice RV, we live at like a third of the cost that, we, that it used to cost us to live at home in Orange County, okay? Yeah, well, Orange County, right? I know, we're not living in Iowa, it's totally different, yeah. Okay, but why do we have these mental pictures anyway that inform us that we're supposed to live a certain way? Well, I blame Instagram. I mean, I love Instagram, but, you know, this picture, by the way, shows up in my feed like every few days, and I just love it. I'm like, oh, there's that picture again of this couple hanging out on the ground. And this is from Van Life Magazine. I'm giving them credit. I asked them if I could use the photo, and they said yes. I didn't tell them for what. But the point is, this is creating a fantasy life, and there's nothing wrong with having an image of, like, what it could be, or goals, or expectations, well, not expectations, but like a vision of what's possible. But this is not real, this does not happen. These people are not watching movies in the forest every night. I mean, there's no van lifer I know that packs a projector, a screen, lights, a generator. Nobody owns white fringe pillows in a van. I'm sorry, it's dirty in there. And the minute they finished this little photo shoot, because that's what it is, they probably ran out and found some showers. Okay, so this kind of stuff can create a little bit of a, a, a gap between um, reality and fantasy. Let me tell you what's real. <laughs> That's my mental journey because, you know, there's a lot going on in this lifestyle. There's, there's a lot you're, you know, you're moving, you're navigating, you're traveling. Maybe you're starting a business and maybe you're creative and that can really spin you out a bit and it can take a toll. So the mental journey, as a nomad, again, expectations versus reality, you're dealing with that, you're dealing with obstacles like a broken slide or you missed a flight, Bryce and I have missed flights before, um, you know, and that just kind of rocks your world for a little while. And then you're untethered. And when I say untethered, I mean that in a variety of ways, like you're untethered from your prior community, your past. Uh, maybe even internet, places, there are places where it's hard to get, and you're just you're sort of floating around a bit, and that can be kind of challenging. And then when you add on things like entrepreneurialism, now you're, uh, you're, you're introducing things like learning curves, um, and a lot of people, a lot of business owners, uh, deal with perfectionism and pressure. Like you gotta get it right, you gotta make the right product or the right service or whatever. And then if you're creative like me, you have a lot of mental clutter. So like, who in here has like, I, like 100 business ideas? Like all the time, yes, I know, I know you people. You're my people. It's like always, it, it never shuts off, okay? So you can see that when you combine these together, you're dealing with a lot of mental stuff, the mental journey. And so just a couple tips, because I like to give tips. Actually, let me go back one. So when you have all this going on, for some people it creates analysis paralysis, right? Where it's like there's so much to navigate that you sort of freeze and you're like, I, I can't make a decision. I need to start the perfect business. I need to make everything look so pretty and make my website amazing. Never spend time making a website look amazing. It is a not worth your time. I can tell you about that tomorrow. So if you feel stuck or making a decision seems hard, it is not about choosing wisely. It is about choosing something. You just have to choose something and go because you can always pivot. Just get going, get some traction, get some momentum. Do not spend time worrying about perfection because I can tell you that is not how businesses succeed. They succeed by failing a whole bunch. So you gotta get out there, you gotta do stuff, okay? 
So a couple tips, because some of you are like, that sounds nice. Can you give me a resource? <laughs> so again, drop expectations, let go of perfectionism. Observe your thoughts and judgment so, um, of yourself. So like, watch how you're thinking about your journey. Are you judging yourself? Are you saying, I'm not living up to this? It doesn't look like it does on Instagram. It doesn't feel like the perfect whatever. Like, drop all that. That's just not reality. And then some people, um, journaling is good. Meditation, exercise always helps me get the energy out of my head and into my body. A couple of resources I love. Um, James Wedmore, anyone? Mind Your Business podcast. He's fantastic. He runs a business online, and he's got this podcast, which is he does deal with kind of the mental aspects of that. So he's really good if you're into this stuff. Asana project management software just helps me keep all those ideas and creative juices kind of organized. And then lastly, this book, The One Thing. Great book if you're just trying to, um, and, and th these slides will be available, so if you're feverishly writing, don't worry about it too much. But um, The One Thing is really helping you get clarity and focus on the thing that really matters most. It was great if you're a creative entrepreneur. So that's the mental stuff. Let's get into the emotional stuff. Ooh, emotions. Okay, so these are like two of my idols. This is Amy Porterfield and Marie Forleo, and I just went to um, Amy Porterfield's conference last weekend, and they spoke, and Marie Forleo says, suppressing my emotions is deadly to my creativity. You need those emotions. You're gonna feel a whole bunch of them, but I'll tell you, they make you super creative. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so if the mental journey is how you think about things and the stories you tell yourself about your journey or yourself, then the emotional journey is how you feel it, how you process it. And some people are kind of more on the mental side and some are more on the emotional side. So some of you are like, I don't get it. I don't know what she's talking about. And that's fine. But for the emotional journey, like for Bryce and I, we really thought that when we hit the road, we were going to meet all these amazing people. We we're going to like grow this cool community and we we're going to like, you know, have all these philosophical discussions and like meet our tribe or whatever. And we finally did. This is a real picture, by the way, not a photo shoot. Um, we went to a convergence where we met a lot of our veers and but it took us five months and so it just, you know, it can take a while to find your tribe and to really click. And what's so funny about this photo, by the way, I think it's funny, is we're all sitting around talking about how to make money on YouTube. <laughs> it's just so funny. So let me show you what the real emotional journey looks like. It can get lonely when you're a nomad, depending on how you do it. I mean, if you want to travel in groups, if you want to go to Chiang Mai and, you know, be with other nomads, you can certainly do that. But it still can get a little lonely. You are dealing with some, some different ways of living that might be new. And you're probably contemplating that sometimes if you're like me, like I stare at water and just contemplate from time to time. So why is that? Well, there's some highs and lows. Um, Yes, it's exciting and you're on this amazing journey and there's all this cool stuff, but you can be isolated and lonely. You might be missing family and friends. It's like one of the top things that people um, share in a, a group I'll tell you about a little bit later. Loss of identity was huge for me. I came from corporate. I worked for an amazing company and I had a lot of amazing friends. Well, not a lot, I have Jill. I've got the one. Just kidding, I have like five. Um, and, you know, I was known there. I was respected. I had opinions that mattered, at least in my own mind. And now it's like nobody knows who I am. It's weird. It's just a little weird. It's okay. But just know that. And then for some people, it's stronger stuff like fear, anxiety, depression, or maybe stuff that's even stronger. And I just want you to know that if you're feeling any of these or anything else, you are totally normal. It's normal. You're going through a huge change. It's a lot going on. So just lean into that and just know that's part of the journey. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not doing it wrong. It's just you're in a huge change curve, okay? And I want you to know you are not alone in that either. So um, this Facebook group is called Full-Time RVing, The Emotional Journey. And I started this last year because I was lonely. And I put like 14 of my RV friends in there. I was like, this will be fun. Like, we'll talk about our loneliness and, you know. <laughs> and shockingly, you guys, this today now has about 830 people in it. 
I didn't know that 800 people felt the same way I did, and that's why I know it's totally normal. And the stuff people share in this group, you won't find in a lot of other groups, because I think there's a lot of pressure online to say that you're having the most amazing time and talk about what a badass you are and all of that. Not in this group. People are really like, dude, this is hard. Like, got any advice? <laughs> So you are welcome to join that. Yes, it's for RVers, but it's really the same. It's just your vehicle of choice as a nomad. So same stuff. All right, so we're going to wrap up emotions because I know some of you are very like, Ugh, I'm squeamish. Um, so some tips. Practice self-compassion and self-care. Be really good to yourself. I want you to know you are incredibly courageous to do this. And I want you to remind yourself of that every day. And do something nice for yourself. I used to take baths all the time when I lived at home, but like I don't own a bathtub anymore. So like every now and again, I'll go to a spa, get a massage. That's my self-care. Um, lean into those intense emotions because they can actually help you do stuff, like create stuff, make art, make music, write, give it back to the world in a productive manner. And then some resources I love, the Life Coach School podcast by Brooke Castillo. She's amazing. She talks about taking all that like emotional sort of negative stuff and like what you do with it. It's very practical. And then Daring Greatly, anyone ever read that? Brene Brown, fantastic book, really talks about authentic living, really um, how courage works. This is a great book for a nomadic journey. And then um, on our website, More Than a Whelan, I am coming out with an emotional journey guidebook. And it's a collection of stories, um, about 13 people contributed. And I give tips and resources about navigating the emotional journey. You can find that on our website. It's not easy to find, to be honest. A horrible navigation. All right. Now we'll get into the financial journey. And it's people like, can you just get to the income stuff already? OK. So um, Amy Porterfield, again, doesn't it look like we're besties? No. She'd like took a picture with everyone who came to her conference. <laughs> But anyway, I love her stuff. She says, revenue is from the repetition of sales, not the repetition of creation. Now, this hits a lot of creatives hard because you're like, oh, I got to sell stuff? Yeah, because if you're always in the process of creation, you'll never have revenue. And she's really good for that. And if you want to see that conference, it's hashtag EE with AP. I rank like 20 in the lineup on the photos, by the way. All right, so the financial journey. So of course, everyone in this room is going to build a multi-million dollar business from their laptop in Thailand. Yes, right, yes. And this is what it looks like when you do that. But here's the real world. This is me in South Dakota, sitting outside of a grocery store in the rain, siphoning free Wi-Fi next to a propane filler and a dumpster. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Been there, I know. We, anybody who's already a nomad, this is so relatable because it's hard to find really good Wi-Fi. And if you do a lot of online business, uploading and downloading and all that, you really need it. Okay, so you do what you gotta do. And I use, I don't like this word, word but it is really real and that is you will have to hustle for a while. If you're gonna build a business online, I want you to know it's not gonna happen overnight and you're gonna have to hustle, especially when you do it as a nomad, because you're always moving, at least if you're like me. Some of you nomads are much smarter and you're hunkering down in a place for a while. I think that's really smart. All right, so let me talk to you a little bit about how some people picture the nomadic income phases, okay? You might start as an employed remote worker, meaning you're already working for a company and they just let you go remote. And by the way, I teach people how to do that, how to negotiate a remote position if you want to keep your job. And that's fine. Some people stay employed and that's great. I love that. You get benefits probably and paycheck. I mean, shoot, best of all worlds. But some people kind of branch out into the temp and seasonal type of work. So things like Amazon, um, Camper Force, Beat Harvest, picking up local jobs, um, taxes, you know, during April kind of thing. And that's great too. I mean, that's another option. And then maybe you dabble in some freelance work, you know, get some writing jobs like I did, or, you know, some videography or whatever it is you're doing, transcription. I mean, there's a million freelance jobs, you guys, really. And I help people find those too, by the way. 
And then maybe you kind of move into the solopreneur thing and you start running a business, more you know, e-commerce or courses or whatever it is. There's so many options. And then maybe you evolve into a business owner. You got a company, you maybe have employees or you're outsourcing, et cetera. Doesn't this look clean and like, what a fantastic evolution. Yes, I could do this. Okay, let me show you real world. Now, this is my real world. This is Bryce and my reality. So this isn't everybody's reality. Um, it's different for everyone, but this is kind of what happened. It's a slippery slope when you're thinking about income streams. And I see this all the time. People in these groups say, I just need to get some income streams. Well, it's a little bit of an illusion because what happened is, you know, we started with a blog. Everyone's like, all our family's like, are you gonna start a blog? You should start a blog. Yes, I'll read it every day. No, they don't, they don't read it. Okay, well, my stepmom does, she's so good. She's always like, I love your stuff. Um, but it's hard work to build a blog, especially if you don't know what you're doing and I didn't know what I was doing. So it's not something you should take on as like a hobby in my opinion. People disagree with me. If you're gonna do it, do it as a business. It takes you on a totally different journey. But then shortly after that, I got into some affiliate sales, you know, ooh, dabbling in affiliate sales. You don't dabble in affiliate sales, guys. That's a whole body of work that you need to really understand and, and do right. And then I, Bryce and I both did some freelance writing, which I no longer do. I did some contract training work, which I no longer do, so I did the freelance thing. Then somewhere around here, I launched some online courses, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then um, Bryce does options trading, so if you're into the market, stock market stuff, he's your guy, and also he does financial consulting for small and medium-sized businesses. And then some coaching consulting, and recently I partnered with a staffing company so I can bring jobs to nomads, remote jobs. So I'm working with employers on developing remote jobs. And then this doesn't even account for all the stuff in between, like running Facebook groups, troubleshooting issues, marketing, and social media. It's a lot of stuff. Can you see this? You can't do all the things. You can't, it's not sustainable. So I now have to kind of unwind a lot of this stuff. Okay, so it's better if you have a mission. Like, what's your mission? Do you wanna build a company or something of value? You wanna offer value to the world? Great. You just need to make some kind of income to sustain your lifestyle? Fine. Um, or do you want to live a particular kind of lifestyle? Just get clear. Kind of like what Kristen was saying earlier about like, what does your day look like? Sort of like, but, but expand that a little bit. You know, what's your ultimate mission here? And then make a plan, have some goals and objectives around that because it's going to help you pick the right business. Now, I said earlier, don't worry about picking the right thing, but it'll at least kind of save you some time instead of doing what I did, which is just like try a bunch of stuff. Because I'm a creative and it's like everything's exciting. Oh, I could do this and I could do that. Da, da, da. Not, that's not strategic. So I would encourage you to be strategic. If I were to do this all over again, I still would have built the blog because I think a blog is so powerful and so important to leverage into other opportunities. That you could replace blog with vlog or podcast or whatever, just be online. Um, I would have spent the first 90 days taking a course just one, like go all in on a course, learn everything you need to know, and then I would build a whole bunch of content. And I would just do that. And then I'd move on to list building and email. And actually there's someone here, no, never mind. Um, list building and email I can talk about tomorrow, it's so powerful. Um, then I would get all in on Pinterest, which surprises a lot of people. Pinterest is amazing as a fast growth platform for traffic. It's not about muffins and wedding dresses, it's a search engine. And then I would go all in on SEO, search engine optimization, because that's the long game of your blog. Then I'd get into affiliate marketing and learn how to sell other people's products, and finally I would build my own products. Because products, that's where you can control the, the bulk of your income, is with your own product. You can do it with affiliate marketing too, but I like having my own product to offer. And so with that, really quickly, um, this product here, Remote Work 101, this is my first product. This is um, a course that helps people find remote work and work remotely. I work with people who are like coming out of corporate or have worked at one kind of job or kind of have an, a work identity, and I help them figure out what else is possible. 
Um, I don't necessarily work with entrepreneurs in this one because I don't help people build businesses here. I help them do more like freelance work or find work with a company. I built this in three iterations. I sold it only through email marketing. I did no ad spend. And if you want to learn more on Sunday, I can talk through courses a little bit more. You can find it on Teachable, remotework.teachable. I'm going to move it off of that platform soon. The second product I built in partnership with my RV besties, Liz, Lindsay, Julie, and myself, we built something called Blogging Camp. And this is to help people jumpstart their blog and make money quickly. I'm not going to sell you you're going to make a ton of money quickly because that's not realistic. But we help you put the right things in place to build a really solid platform to get going. We did webinar marketing for this one. No ad spend. And you can learn more on Sunday about that. Um, by the way, with Remote Work 101, um, I put that on sale until Monday just for this, just because I knew I was coming here. So if you're into that. I can tell you more about that. Blogging Camp, we also made available as a recorded. It's live. We normally train it live, but we're actually offering recordings at a greatly reduced rate. So, All right, here's some income. Just to show you what's possible with products only. I didn't include all the other stuff going on right now. So in November of last year, I launched the first iteration of Remote Work 101. It was like an hour of content. And it was part of a bundle of other products. I'd never sold anything before. And my bulk or my part of that made almost $1,000 in revenue. Well, 600 something, not almost 1,000, to be honest. Then I relaunched it in April. I did what's called a pre sale launch, where you sell something before you make it, which is amazing because it holds you accountable and you have income coming in while you build it. So if you want to learn more about how to do that, I can talk to you about that tomorrow. Um, as you can see, and I only sold through email, no ad spend. I'm not spending money yet because I'm not there yet. But made almost 2000 Actually, I made a little bit more in revenue than that. Um, but my portion of it was a little under 2000 because I had affiliates. Then got a little smarter. And then in June, relaunched again with a final product. By then, I had testimonials. I had people who had found jobs. It's like I had a real product. And um, I got some more affiliates. And in one week, oh, these are, um, by the way, this is how much I made in the time frame. So one week, two weeks, one week, uh, $5,200 in a week. I was like, yes, I can do this. I know what I'm doing. Um, and I really still didn't know what I was doing. I don't have this locked down. I don't know everything there is to know about marketing. And then with Blogging Camp, we did webinar marketing, which is very different than email marketing. Super powerful, and we made about $5,200 collectively in one hour. Okay, so a lot of this is experimentation, being willing to fail, just trying some stuff, learning, a lot of learning here, and a lot of being humble. But it can be done, because I feel like if I can do it, anyone can do it. I really do. Okay, I think I'm over time. So am I over time? No, oh, I'm not. Oh, good. All right, but I'm almost done. So a couple things. With the financial journey, you're going to run into obstacles. Um, the transition phase and the work identity stuff, that can kind of slow you down a little bit. It did for me. You're always moving, and that can create some challenges, technical challenges, and just kind of maybe even wear you down a little bit. Um, it always feels like you never have enough time, and you always have too much pressure to get stuff done especially as a solopreneur, okay? Um, and then it is kind of hard, or at least this is where I'm at, to know, you know, what are the right systems and processes to kind of start automating this stuff? And when and how to scale? Like, when do I hire? How do I hire? Do I have the budget to hire? These are some challenging questions. But again, just remember, go easy on yourself. You're doing a lot of stuff if you're kind of going to go into this online business world. Okay, so just kind of, just, just don't worry about going fast. A lot of people do, like they put pressure. I gotta hurry up. I, no, why? It's not a race. You know, this, you're in the long game. <laughs> and then lastly, I think the biggest obstacle for a lot of people is a paycheck and salary mindset. So like if you've always made a certain amount of money or even the most amount of money you've ever made, that's kind of where you're set mentally. So like, you might get frustrated that you're not making that same amount when you first come out. Or once you hit that amount, you can't break through because it's kind of how you're set. So you have to be educating yourself about how to break through that. So here are some tips. Again, determine your mission and create a plan. 
Um, do what's called closest to the dollar activities, meaning of all the things you have to do in the day, pick the ones that you know generate revenue. So for example, for this trip, I had so many things to do, but the one thing that I knew could actually create revenue was sending sales emails. That's my priority, that's my top priority. And then play the long game. Know that you're in this for a long time if you're building a business online. It's a lot to learn, but it can be done. Couple of resources, you are a badass at making money. Anyone read that? What, nobody here? I'm super shocked. This is like big in the RV world right now. Everybody's reading this and having masterminds. I didn't mention masterminds, but I have one with those four ladies. Build a mastermind, you will go way farther. And if you don't know what that is, just come talk to me or really some of the other speakers. I know they're in masterminds. Great book, it'll help you push past that mental money mindset. I'm using Toggle to track my time right now so I can see where I'm spending it and then how to outsource, like what I'm going to outsource based on time. And then lastly, Amy Porterfield has a program called Systems That Scale. It's coming out, it's not out yet. Um, it's fantastic for people like me because it just helps me understand how to like scale up. All right, so I will end where I begin, which is the reinvention process. We went through the mental and the emotional and financial journey. Did you relate to any of this? That guy there. Thank you so much. <laughs> this one guy. <laughs> no, I mean, and if you don't yet, you will. I want you to remember this because once you get on the road, if you're not there already, I think you'll be like, ah, there was that one time I went to the Nomad Summit and that woman was talking about the mental journey. I'm so glad I paid attention to that because that's where I'm at. Um, and when you have the intersection of all of these things, for some people it feels like a zone of chaos. There's just a lot going on. I want you to know that's called transformation. That is where you are truly transforming into who you're trying to be. And so when you feel a little crazy, just know it's part of the journey. It's what it takes. So embrace it. Embrace transformation. And uh, I just wanna end with thanking you so much. I really appreciate you and um, would love to connect with you. Here's how I can help you. I offer remote work resources if you wanna grow a blog into a business. And I'm really good at helping people find clarity. I can kind of hear someone talk and sort of laser beam in on where they should focus. How you can help me, because I mean, I need help, clearly. Um, I love doing collaborations with people. Uh, systems and processes is where I'm at. So I, I actually met Lisa, I know she's here. She's a systems gal. It's like, that's what I need. So if you're really good at that. And then lastly, however else you think you can help me, I let you in on sort of the mess of where, what we're building. And if you feel like, hey, I could help you, I'm all ears, I'm, I'm into it. So um, you can find us at More Than a Wheelin and on Instagram. Thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm.